Okay, this question, ideal gases. Question is, an ideal gas initially has a pressure 1 into 10 power 5 pascal, the volume 4 into 10 power minus 4 meter cube, and the temperature 300, as shown in the figure. A change in the energy of the gas is 240 joule results in the increase of the pressure to a final value of 5 into 10 power 5 pascal at constant volume. The thermodynamic temperature becomes T. Calculate the temperature T. So look, the equation PV is equal to NRT. In this equation, this N and R is constant. So we can write PV divided by temperature is equal to constant. Now this equation can be written as P1 V1 over T1 is equal to P2 V2 over T2. Initial pressure is 1 into 10 power 5. Initial volume is 4 into 10 power minus 4. Initial temperature is 300. The final pressure is 5 into 10 power 5. The volume final is 10 power minus 4. And this temperature T2 is required. Now please calculate this. So the answer is 1500 Kelvin. Now the next, calculate the amount of the gas. Amount of the gas mean we have to calculate the number of the moles. So formula PV is equal to NRT. So N required, so it can be PV divided by RT. So N is equal to, you can take this data or this one, it's up to you. So one into 10 power five, multiply by volume four into 10 power minus four, divided by R, 8.31 molar gas constant, and the temperature is 300. So calculate this. Okay, so the answer is 0 0.016. These are the moles, so amount of the gas. Now move to the next, the increase in the internal energy delta U of the system may be represented by the expression delta U is equal to Q plus W. State what is meant by the symbol positive Q, it is heat supplied to the system. Heat energy supplied, thermal energy supplied to the system. And plus W, work done on the gas. Mean the compression of the gas. Next, state for the gas at A, the value of delta U. No, at the gas. Delta U is equal to Q plus W. And the W is equal to pressure multiplied by change of the volume. According to this data, there is no change of the volume, 4 into 10 power minus 4, 4 into 10 power minus 4. So the work done is 0. So when this W is 0, then delta U and Q both are equal. And the heat supplied given here, 240. So it is 240, 240. So this is the question. Next question is, a vertical peg is attached to the edge of the horizontal disc of the radius R. A disc rotates at the constant angular speed omega. A horizontal beam of the parallel light produces a shadow of the peg on the screen. So this is the light, this is a peg. It's moving like this, the shadow is moving on the screen. At time zero, the peg is at P, this point. 
reducing a shadow on the screen, this S means the center. At time t, the disk has rotated through the angle theta. The peg is now at the angle R. So this is R and this angle theta. Shadow at Q, determine in terms of the omega T and angle theta, in terms of omega, the angle theta. Look, the angle is distance and distance is speed into time. So the distance, angular distance, angular speed multiplied by time. In terms of the omega T and R, the distance SQ. Look, this SQ is the displacement. SQ distance is, so SQ distance, so formula, W omega T R and SQ, we have done that X is equal to X naught sine theta, if the oscillation starts from the mean position, so this X is XQ, and the X naught is the radius, and sine theta, theta is omega t. So this answer, look, this displacement is equal to x naught sine theta. So sq is equal to r sine omega t. Use the answer in two to show that the shadow on the screen performs a simple harmonic motion. This shadow is executing simple harmonic motion. So look, this SQ is equal to R sine omega T. So what is the displacement of this? X, so DX over DT is the speed. So derivative of this, it becomes R omega sine, derivative is cos, cos omega T. And then DV over DT is the acceleration again, it becomes R omega into omega into minus sine omega t. So it becomes minus R omega square sine omega t. So look, if this sign is taken maximum, R constant, sorry, R is changing. So omega is constant. So A directly proportional to minus R, which is the equation of the simple harmonic motion. I repeat x q is equal to r sine omega t it's similar to x is equal to x naught sine theta now the derivative of this dx over dt x naught cos omega t and into omega because this theta is omega t so omega t derivative omega t and then this is V, so acceleration is equal to dV over dt. So this is X naught, cos derivative is sine minus omega t into omega into omega. So it becomes A is equal to minus R omega square sine omega t, which is a simple harmonic motion equation, or other one. This is displacement time graph, this is the sine theta. Then the velocity time graph is the cos graph. And then acceleration graph is the minus sine graph. So look at this X and A graph, both are opposite in direction because this is positive sine, this is minus sine graph. And then when displacement zero, acceleration zero, when displacement maximum, acceleration maximum, I mean A and X both are directly proportional but opposite in direction. So this is simple harmonic motion. Okay, next, the disc has a radius R 12 centimeter and is rotating with the angular speed omega 4.7 radians per second. Determine for the shadow on the screen, the frequency formula omega is equal to two pi F and F is equal to omega divided by two pi. Omega is 4.7 divided by two divided by 3.14. So the answer is 0 0.75 and the next 
maximum speed. So maximum speed V is equal to X not omega, mean V is equal to R omega. Look, the radius is given 12 centimeters, so 0.12 in meters multiplied by omega, 4.7. So the answer is 0 0.56. Next, state what is meant by oscillation. Answer is two, and flow motion of an object about a fixed position is called oscillation to and fro motion of an object about a fixed position is called oscillation free oscillation and oscillation in which no energy from external source is required to maintain amplitude is called the free oscillation. An oscillation in which no energy from the external source. Yes, energy is required, but internally it is managed from external source, no energy is required to maintain its amplitude. That is called the force oscillation. If the energy required from the external source, that is the forced oscillation. But this is free oscillation. Simple harmonic motion. An oscillation in which acceleration is directly proportional to the displacement, but opposite in direction, or acceleration directed towards mean position. This is simple harmonic motion an oscillation in which acceleration is directly proportional to the displacement, but opposite in direction, or instead of opposite direction, we can write acceleration is directed towards mean position. Next is two inclined planes, R, A, and L, A, each have the same constant gradient. They meet at their lower edge. So they are meeting at the point A. A small ball is moved from the rest from plane RA and then rises up the plane LA, I mean it's going down, then moving up. It moves down plane LA and then AR, RA, to the original height. The motion repeated itself. State and explain whether the motion of the ball is simple harmonic. It is not. Reason. Because the gradient of the slope is constant. Angle is same. When the ball moves down, its displacement is decreasing. X is changing. But acceleration at the slope is G sine theta. So the value of the G constant, angle constant. So A acceleration is constant at the slope. So it's not a simple harmonic motion because acceleration is not directly proportional to displacement. Okay, for a spherical conductor, I mean for the perfect sphere, charges, whether positive or negative, they are kept by the surfaces they are equally distributed. And for the positively charged sphere, the field is outward and radial. 
this is the field it is outward and radial and all field lines appear to be originated from the center of the sphere thus we can assume we can consider that all charges are concentrated at its center to so this answer So in perfect sphere, all charges are equally spaced at the surface. Electric field is radial for the positive charge, it's outward. And we can assume it that it is originated from the center. Thus, all charges are concentrated at the center and act as a point charge. Next. Two isolated protons are separated in a vacuum by the distance x. Calculate the electric force between the two protons and gravitational force between two protons. Now the electric force, one over four by epsilon naught Q1 Q2 over D square divided by G M1 M2 over D square. So D square canceled. 1 over 4 by epsilon naught is 8.9, 10 power plus 9. This Q and Q, it becomes Q square. And the charge of the proton is 1.6 into 10 power minus 19 square divided by G value is 6.67 into 10 power minus 11. And the mass is square. The mass of the proton is 1.67 into 10 power minus 27 and square. Now calculate this. Okay, so the answer is 1.2 into 10 power 36 is the ratio. Now by reference to your answer in one suggests why the gravitational force are not considered when calculated the force between charge particle because this is the electric force. It is greater than the gravitational force because the ratio is this, this ratio one. So due to this large value of the electric force, we will ignore the gravitational force. Electric field strength is vector for both positive charges. It is opposite in direction. This is a positive charge, it's electric field in this direction. This is a positive charge, outward, electric field opposite. So there will be a point where both are zero as a resultant. Thus, resultant will be zero at a point. So we will write at P, the resultant electric field strength is the electric field strength of A plus minus electric field strength of B because this is positive and this is negative in the opposite direction. So 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught QA over DA square minus 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught QB over DB square. Now one over four by epsilon naught common. QA is three pico, so pico is 10 power minus 12, divided by distance of the P from this is 0 0.05 square, and minus, and this QB, this is 12 into 10 power minus 12, divided by its distance from this, so 15 minus five, it's 10, so 0 0.10 square. So when this is calculated, the answer is coming zero. So electric potential is a scalar. So it's positive for the positive charge, negative for the negative, both are positive. So the resultant potential is equal to the potential of A plus potential of B because both are positive. So the answer is one over four by epsilon naught QA over DA plus one over four by epsilon naught 
QB over DB. So one over four by epsilon naught common. So QA over DA plus QB over DB. Now substitute the values. 8.9 into 10 power plus nine. This is QA is three pico. So three into 10 power minus 12 divided by 0 0.05 and plus 12 into 10 power minus pico is 12. So minus 12 divided by 0 0.10 and then calculate it. Okay, so the question is, answer is 1.6. So question is silver, 107 nucleus. 47104 mean 47 this is showing the charges and 107 this is the mass mean 47 e is the charge and 107 u is the mass has a speed v when it is long distance from the p long distance mean at infinity where the potential is zero use the answer in c1 to calculate the minimum value of the speed such that the nucleus can reach the point P. So the work is done on the nucleus to move it from infinity to point P. So the work W is equal to charge multiplied by potential difference. And this work is converted into kinetic energy, which is equal to half MB square. So we will compare half mv square is equal to charge multiplied by potential difference. So one by two mass of the nucleus, server nucleus is 107u and the u value is 1.66 into 10 power minus 27 speed square, speed required charge is 47 e elementary charge 1.6 into 10 power minus 19 and the potential difference is 1.6 minus zero because 1.6 at the P and at long distance from P infinity is zero. Now calculate the answer. Okay, after calculation, this is 1.16, 10 power four are we can write 1.2 into 10 power four meter per second. Next. The question is define capacitance. It is the ratio between charge of one plate and potential difference between both plates of capacitor. It is the ratio between charge of one plate and the potential difference between both plates of the capacitor. So the capacitors are connected in series according to the Kirchhoff second law, V1, V2, V3 is the total voltage supplied in the EMF supplied. Now, according to the formula, Q is equal to CV V is equal to Q divided by C. So this is Q divided by C. In series, current remains same, the charge remains same. So Q divided by C1, Q divided by C2, Q divided by C3. So Q divided by C, Q common, one over C1, one over C2, one over C3, cancelled, hence proved, 1 over total capacitance, 1 over C1, 1 over C2, 1 over C3. Okay, so question is a battery of the EMF 12 volt and negligible internal resistance is connected to a network of two capacitors and resistor. The capacitor have a capacitance 200 and 600 microfarad. The switch has two positions A and B. The switch is moved to the position A. Calculate the combined capacitance. So both are connected in series. So formula one over C, one over C1, one over C2. So one over C is equal to one divided by 600 plus one divided by 200. LCM is 600. So this is one plus two threes are three. So C is equal to 600 divided by four. So the answer is 150 microfarad.
Okay, so the next question is the charge on 600 microfarads. So 600 is in series. In series, current remains same, total current pass. So the total charge will appear here. So the, for the total charge, Q is equal to total capacitance, total voltage. Total capacitance is 150 into 10 power minus six micro in the previous part. And the total voltage supplied is 12. So 1.8 into 10 power minus three mean 1.8 milli coulomb. Now the potential difference across 600. So again, Q is equal to CV. V is equal to Q divided by C. The charge is 1.8 into 10 power minus three and its capacitance is 600 into 10 power minus six. Answer, 3.0 volt. Okay, the next part is switch is now moved to the position B. In this side, so now the capacitor 600 is connected with the resistor, so discharging occurs, energy is lost, and the energy formula is equal to one by two CV square, capacitance constant, so energy directly proportional to V square, mean E1 over E2 is equal to V1 square over V2 square. So suppose initially energy E and the later it becomes 50%, 50% lost, 50% remaining 0.5 E. So the initial voltage is three and the next voltage X is required. So E canceled. So X square is equal to three square nine multiplied by 0.5. So this is 4.5 X square and X is equal to 4.5 under root. So the answer is 2.12. Next question. State two uses of the capacitor in electric circuit other than for the smoothening. So number one is it is used in tuning circuits. Number two, it's used as a time delay device. And it is also used for the short period power supply. So there are different uses. Number one, it is used, it is used to store energy. It is used in a smoothing of the ripples. It is used in the tuning circuit. It is used as a time delay device. It is also used as a power supply for a short period of time. So any two, except smoothening. Next, the combined capacitance between the terminal A and B is given, which is four microfarad, mean the total capacitance. The two capacitors have capacitance C and the remaining capacitor, capacitance three. The potential difference between A and B is 12. Determine the capacitance C. Look, these two capacitors are connected in parallel, so it becomes six. Now six C and C in series. So one over total capacitance is one over C, one over C plus one over six. But this one over total is given one by four. So we will write one by four is equal to two by C plus one by six. Now one by four minus one by six is equal to two by C. LCM is 12, four threes up, six twos up. This is two by C, so this three minus two, one. So one divided by 12, two by C, by cross multiplication, it is 24. So the C capacitance is 24 microfarad. Next, calculate the magnitude of the total positive charge transferred to the arrangement. So the total charge is total capacitance into total voltage, and the total capacitance is given here four microfarad. So it is four into 10 power minus six and the total voltage supplied is given 12. So answer is 48 micro coulomb. Next, use the answer to state the magnitude of the charge on one plate of the capacitor C. So both are connected in series. Current remains same, so charge remains same. So the total charge 48 micro coulomb will appear on the both capacitors and then capacitance three, 
So look here, the charge is divided, equally divided because three micro, three microfarad. So when 48 is divided into two equal parts, so it becomes 24 micro coulomb.